Hi, Natalia. Are you able to hear me? I just want to check that the, the volume's good. Hi guys, we're just waiting for Tanvi and Shweta to come online. I hope you all can hear me. Sushmita, would you just give me a thumbs up? Can you hear me? Hi Anjali. Hi Atmika. Oh, great. You said yes. Okay. That's great. So just about a few seconds. I'm sure both Shweta and Tanvi must be just getting online. I'm just waiting for them to send through their request and we'll get them, get them through. Hi, Anjali. Hi, Geeta. Thanks for joining in. Hi guys, please hold on. We're just waiting for our guests to come online today. And a big welcome to you all on our Wellbeing Weekend. Every weekend we bring experts in certain fields to talk to you all. We do a Q&A. Yeah, and we have spoken to quite a few well-being experts in the last few months and it's been very, very interesting so far. Hi, Jayanti, is that you? India Hemp, thanks for joining. Okay, I think they've just sent me a request. No, I don't see the request. I see that they've joined the chat. Okay, there we go. Now I see the request. Okay, Tanbi in the house. Just, just waiting to get connected. There we Hi. go. Hi. Hi, Shita. Hi, Tanvi. Hi. Hi. Nice to meet you. <laughs> nice Yo. to meet you too. I'm sorry yeah. we couldn't get you on the call yesterday. I know. I think that you was know, my fault. Yeah, some or, technical or issues. My... Yeah. yeah. But nevertheless, we have you on today. And thank you so much. And a big welcome to all our viewers today uh, and a big welcome to our well-being weekend as well as I mentioned to you all that we speak to um, different experts uh, you know every weekend and we do have a Q&A session again just generally to check you know or talk about their journey so far. Uh, today we mm -hmm. have uh, Tanvi and Shweta who are founders of uh, Sisters in Sweat. I'm sure most people who hail from Bangalore have heard about this community group, which is set up by women for women um, to enhance sporting and wellness skills, particularly in the field of football. And it's also a support group to help each other on a personal and professional front. So today we're going to be chatting with Shweta and Tanvi uh, just to understand as to how this group came about to being set up. We're going to be also talking about their personal journey uh, because both of them represent Nike and, and Shweta is a fitness trainer associated with Nike. And uh, um, Tanvi is a footballer again, represents Nike. Is that right? Yeah, that's correct. <laughs> okay. Yeah. Okay, great. And uh, uh, again, for, okay? for our... Sorry, I think the light's okay. There's a bit of a glare right. on you. I'm not sure. Oh, yeah. No, no. I think yeah. it's okay. I think we're good. It's okay? Yeah. Okay. Yeah. I think we're good. Yeah. Uh, 
Well, yes, we are going to be taking on questions online. If people do have anything to ask Shweta, Tanvi, or myself from a Pilates perspective. And in case we don't have time for those questions, we could always answer them offline and we we'll post them up on our stories. Is that okay? Yeah, yeah, that's yeah. great. Sounds good. Okay. Cool. Okay, let's let's get started and welcome to you both and thank you so much for, you know, uh coming online with us and chatting with us. So, uh to get started, um uh, well, I'm sure most of them would like to know about Sisters in Sweat. How did the community come about being set up in Bangalore? What prompted you girls, you know, to set up the support group as well? Yeah. You want to get started? Yeah okay I'll take this uh, I can see a lot of girls from the community have tuned in um uh, so they know the story yeah. uh but mm-hmm. yeah just for a, lo- a larger audience um so Tanvi and me were part of a Nike ad campaign back in 2016 um it was a women centric campaign and they had sort of got uh women from different areas uh, of sports and wellness to do this um campaign to build awareness mm-hmm. around um you know fitness and basically our uh, sport um we were both part of that campaign and uh, so we never really met but you know through that mm-hmm. sort of campaign we knew of each other um okay. and of course once the campaign was done um Tanvi who had returned from the UK at that point uh, having played in a couple of the top teams there uh decided to move to mm-hmm. Bangalore to play football um yeah. because she thought her opportunities in Bangalore versus Delhi at that point were better um she also moved mm-hmm. back i'm sorry i'm speaking for and she's like a bit weird but <laughs> nonetheless since i'm <laughs> telling the story mm-hmm. um i think uh, tanvi decided to move back and play football in india because she wanted to make a difference here she wanted to play for the country as well but i think more importantly she wanted to make a difference um so yeah okay. cut to the ad campaign that we did together and then she ended up moving to bangalore and that's where we met um and mm-hmm. of course you know we started uh, you know spending a bunch of time together um and mm-hmm. one uh one night i was called out to a friend's birthday party uh and i mm-hmm. sort of dragged tanvi along who if you know her okay. is not not somebody who wants to step out for a night of drinking or dancing or anything like that but i said you know you know you new to the city meet some people come on out mm-hmm. so she obliged mm-hmm. we went out and i introduced her to our friend shanali or my friend at that time uh and shanali mm-hmm. was looking to learn a sport hockey actually uh but she couldn't find okay. a coach and when i had okay. introduced um, tanvi as a footballer to shanali so shanali was like will you teach us football um and of okay. course you know uh it was a night out and it was a light hearted conversation so nobody really took it seriously uh but Shana- mm-hmm. uh, tanvi nevertheless said you know why don't we have a session the following uh, weekend uh and invite mm-hmm. some of your friends So Shanali okay. invited her friends I invited my friends to the session and Tanvi and me decided mm-hmm. that we do that session together in that okay. I would handle the first bit of the session and warm up the girls and then Tanvi would then hand over handle the football drills and a little bit of game time so on that first okay. sunday morning i think we were expecting maybe four or five girls to show up uh, but mm-hmm. to our surprise and it was a very pleasant surprise that we ended up having 17 girls uh we oh, still wow. have pictures from that one oh, wow. that first session very special session for us yeah. yeah um so yeah that was uh, the first uh, sisters in sweat session back then we didn't call ourselves sisters in sweat we just said we were doing a football session um and mm-hmm. since uh, th- that one session at the end of that one session i think all the girls had such a great time that they asked mm-hmm. that we do it again um and in fact we okay. had a great time coaching as well so we said uh, let's do okay. this every weekend and that's how we kind of started okay. we created a small whatsapp group um and mm-hmm. then um we started meeting every weekend to do these football sessions and the whatsapp group fr- grew from 17 uh women to what is now over 350 uh, women on two separate whatsapp groups so that's it, it grew absolutely okay. organically um okay. and i think at the end of last year so we had been uh you know playing for, for about two years we even had mm-hmm. a football tournament organized for the girls who had been playing with us who had been learning the sport uh and that was okay. you know uh, amazing to a lot of the women who women who participated in the tournament had never played a uh, sport competitively not in school or never played sport at all so it was great for them okay. to wear a jersey and represent a team so um yeah. that that was sort of uh, you know what we achieved at the end of last year and then this okay. year we were in a good space and we thought you know we'd uh, one have a intermediate 
uh, session for the girls who had been playing for a while, and we'd mm-hmm. open up a beginner session or keep the beginner session to invite more women because we saw the community was growing. We also saw yeah. the potential in going into more sport, and we were on the verge of doing that. But of course, you know, mm-hmm. um, circumstances didn't allow us. Finally, we were about to start our frisbee. um basketball box cricket okay uh which okay. we will do we intend to do it but all in good time now okay. obviously uh, after the uh, yeah. after all of this is uh, it's safe for to do that we will do that uh but in yeah. the meantime we've pivoted we've gone on to the online space and we continue to o- offer virtual classes um okay. and so yeah we've kept the community hopefully motivated and active through the through the lockdown and uh so yeah i guess that's how we've stayed together as well okay no i think it's such a fabulous any uh, avenue because i don't think very many cities have such groups especially which is you know concentrated uh, you know with women women building such communities i'm not sure if other cities in india have this yeah. and when when mm-hmm. i came to hear about this i was like wow this is such a great initiative and it's it's such a great support group right people as you just said that uh, women who probably never played any sport before you know coming together exactly. into a group like this and you know yeah. uh, it's 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 something something that they can relate to and belong to which is such a beautiful uh, you know aspect of this whole whole group but which i think is like a fabulous initiative yeah great Thank i mean so kudos much. to you girls yeah kudos to you girls <laughs> and i understand that you're just looking i mean at currently as you said it's just football uh but you are well, looking to kind of expand this peer yes. and kind of take exactly. it on to just, other sports yeah, as well yeah just before the lockdown and before all of that we had started we had done a demo of frisbee session ultimate frisbee which okay. is quite a fun sport and we were okay. about to launch the the classes but of course we had to sort of uh, postpone that plan for now um okay but yeah okay great uh now just coming up to my uh next question now is is that uh you focus on football is that why because tanvi is a footballer and she can actually kind of concentrate and train women in her line of expertise is that why you choose football so um i think football see like like shweta said i don't think we planned you know uh, for sisters and sweat to happen for this community to happen it just sort of happened very organically from after right. one night where one of you know uh, where shunali her friend was interested in doing a so session in two now isn't it yeah, yeah. <laughs> where uh where we did you know a session for shinali and and her friends and things um obviously okay. i you know i play football so the it just made sense yeah, to do a football session uh and it grew okay. because of football the community grew because of okay. football for sure um but i okay. think the women the women i think um after playing a team sport and enjoying that competitive spirit and you know basically what the yeah. community was becoming Uh, I think all mm-hmm. the women started to realize that they would love to venture into different sports as well. Um and so okay. we did ex- we did explore that. Um you know mm-hmm. we uh we are planning to go into basketball like she said into box cricket. Yeah. Um frisbee mm-hmm. we were about to launch in fact until this whole quarantine situation happened. Um mm-hmm. so yeah, yeah I think football happened to be the most natural step because I'm a footballer. um and it, it was correct. a starting point yeah um but yeah. i think the idea is to venture into a lot of different sports and um so our tagline the sisters in sweat tagline is that we're a community of women for women stitched together by sport and wellness so that's a very broad well, umbrella right. because we want to expand yeah that's the idea yeah. um so yeah, yeah. i mean I, i hope that answers the question i no it does it does it definitely does and again uh yeah it's it's just not like one line of sport that people get interested into i think it's just more about the whole community feeling of being together and being you know supported you know either personally or professionally it doesn't matter what line of sport that you know women eventually you know uh, choose to play or yeah. practice correct okay yeah absolutely uh, going on yeah going on um you know uh, do you kind of outline any prerequisites uh, that women need to have before they join your group or is it open for anybody any age barriers uh, of any kind yeah. so we don't really have any prerequisites to be quite honest i mean we uh, okay. when we were playing when we were doing the football sessions obviously it was a a, a contact sport so women were aware of that so if uh, you know uh, the point was we wanted to 
open it out to anybody no matter what fitness level uh, you were at so even if you came to right. our sessions and you've never played or hadn't been active for a long time we still sort of had a place for you in that we'd regress some of the movements we'd tell you to take it easy um but um yeah and then we eventually went on to do an intermediate session for the girls and there we had a prerequisite where we said you know if you're going to be part of the intermediate session you should have played the sport before you should generally be active etc so for our beginner okay. sessions no real prerequisite obviously if you had an injury etc we'd ask you to sort of make sure that your uh, you know doctor was give you the go ahead certificate before you came onto the field and played a sport because that's you know okay. quite a leap to go from being okay. injured to you know playing a sport but other than that no real prerequisite yeah. no yeah okay like, and, uh, and how many times do you all sorry go on so i just to give you an example be? there are there are a lot of um, at least with the online space that we we've, we've gone into the virtual space and we're doing our uh, yeah. you know the sessions and everything uh, there are a lot of yeah. times where uh, a daughter and mother both together are doing the session i've done that with my mother right. uh, we've done okay. sessions my mom and i have done sessions together so there isn't so any like cool. age barrier okay. yeah there isn't any right. age barrier um, and the thing is that we are actually providing sessions at least with our online um, the setup um in okay. such a way that we have a low intensity session every week we have a high intensity and a medium intensity session so obviously depending on okay. where you think you stand you can choose the right. session um mm-hmm. and uh, even within the session there are for every uh, the instructor will always give you like a regressed version and an, a more advanced mm-hmm. version so you can choose the movement that you want to go with so that way it okay. sort of eliminates the barrier of age or you know uh, where you are yeah, yeah w- what level of fitness you're at yeah. you want to be as yeah. inclusive no, which, as possible yeah yeah no which is great which is fabulous great i'm ready to take on any pilates related questions that <laughs> you have for me yeah. good okay so i think you know um you know i obviously i'm i'm from the fitness uh, uh, industry and i have a good idea of what it is but i think there's a lot of you know uh, misinformation or lack of information about pilates so i think my first yeah. question i want to shoot out to you is um pilates first started off as a, a rehab tool right um that's what it was primarily mm-hmm. used for uh and yeah. now it's become hugely popular amongst you know the general population athletes even um could you tell yeah. us what happened what why that switch happened and why you think it's for everybody Well um I wouldn't say it it's a switch that happened as you rightly pointed out that pilates was introduced as a rehabilitative mechanism by joseph pilates during world war 1 because he basically rehabilitated prisoners of war this movement practice is a low intensity one it is a conditioning program um uh, which helps you heal as elevate all your fitness performances so it's just mm-hmm. not concentrated on the rehabilitation end and why it is very popular with sports people is uh one it makes sports persons really aware of the practice that they choose to do be it from a conditioning perspective uh be it uh from any kind of um uh what do you say like uh see if every exercise has a flow to it has a regime to it now for a sports mm-hmm. sports sports person typically uh, you know they tend to kind of work a lot consistently on their non dominant on their dominant muscles and their yeah. non dominant muscles tend to kind of tend to you know be injured or they tend to get weak over a period of time and pilates helps with that realization because right. if they use it as a conditioning mechanism uh, yeah. with their line of sport that they choose to play one they stay injury free two they learn to become more self aware of their bodies so that they carry their bodies better because pilates is so much about posture so much about alignment and it helps you work in correct form not only while doing pilates but also by when they practice their uh, you know choice of sport so that is why it actually moved on or i would say uh, you know leans more on a conditioning program mm-hmm. that anybody can do and because this yeah. regime is so adaptable it is so versatile that everybody can do it without any uh, you know like you don't have to be just fit or you have to have a certain range of 
motion to practice Pilates. Anybody, right from the time you can take on verbal cues, say from the age of 12, going on to about 80, 85 plus, can practice Pilates. Mm -hmm. Yes, it is a low intensity regime, but again, because it is versatile, because it's adaptable to the client that we work with, anybody can practice Pilates. And that is how it's moved on to uh, people from all walks or all spheres of life who can safely practice Pilates because they can eventually do everything else better. So, um, Great, you know, yeah. it's, Pilates is a lifestyle program. It's, it's just not something that one would want to do for a couple of months to reach a certain short term goal. It is something mm -hmm. that you can continue doing for life because eventually everything that you're doing, even other than Pilates, it will just help you do that better. Yeah, Does absolutely. that answer That's, uh, your question, Shweta? Absolutely. Um, do you have the next okay. question? No. Um, you had all, okay, I have all the questions. <laughs> uh, I, I do have another question. And this was, um, sure. you know, again, it's one that comes, comes, uh, comes past uh, often. What is the difference between mm -hmm. Mac Pilates and Reformer Pilates? Um, you know, when people say, I do Pilates, um, or, you know, if someone is looking to do Pilates, uh, should they be choosing one over the other? What are the benefits or, or, or is it pretty much the same thing? No, uh, not really. But, you know, the kind of Pilates that we practice, Shweta, is the classical method. So we stick to the original teachings of Joseph Pilates. So we honor the original teachings of Joseph Pilates. It's the purest version of Pilates that we practice. Now, when Pilates okay. as a regime was introduced, Pilates was practiced on the mat as well as resistance and support-based equipments. So it's an amalga mm -hmm. amalgamation of mat work as well as equipment work. Now the equipment okay. work offers resistance and support to a client, whereas the mat work just helps one take ownership of that resistance and support they have gained working on the equipment uh, yeah. into their bodies when they do mat work. Because mat work is so much about using one's own body weight. And that's how it supports and complements both both the ends. So uh, with the classical method, uh, we practice as well as teach mat work as well as equipment work. So there is no segregation. So typically, if people mm. come and do Pilates with us twice a week or thrice a week, there is a mixture of both mat work as well as equipment work that one needs to do to be able to get right. the full benefit of this practice. So, I mean, you, well, you, ju you just can't say mat work over, you know, equipment work, because if you have done classical Pilates or the original mm -hmm. form of Pilates, you wouldn't lean on to any aspect of mat work or equipment work because you would do everything. Perfect. Yeah, that's, uh, yeah. that yeah. answers my question adequately. Uh, I think you touched yeah. upon, I mean, my final question was, uh, and I think you touched upon this anyways, is, you know, with, I'm seeing a lot of uh, elite athletes and sports people taking mm -hmm. get, taking two man uh, two pilates in general mm -hmm. um mm -hmm. is has it what has been the reason for this spike in popularity you think i mean was it something that uh, you well, know a particular sports well, person um, started yeah, sports people. I mean, it, this is something which has probably come into India just in the last few years. Again, it's more of an educated perspective that people were not uh, very well informed as to what this movement practice can do for sports people. Because initially, I think when Pilates came into India, it was just popular with the Bollywood uh, fraternity, mm -hmm. where, you know, yeah. they used to see people hanging off different bars and, you know, they mm -hmm. thought it was more acrobatic. It was just meant yeah. for women to practice Pilates because it was all about flexibility and fit balls, etc. Uh, yeah. But with sports people, it's been very popular in the US and Europe right from the early 80s onwards. Yeah. And it's yeah, more so because, um, you know, um, athletes realize that it Pilates as a movement practice helps with the breathing mechanism and that in turn improves lung capacity and which also builds a range of motion in their joints. And joints, apart okay. from that, it helps because the breathing, uh, you know, uh, breathing mechanism is so intense, it improves mental focus that an athlete needs. And apart yeah. from that, apart from building strength and stability in uh, you know, the core of the powerhouse. It also uh, helps people generally 
understand uh, or again as i said you know uh, uh, make those choices in their bodies about you know clearly defining that okay you know my non dominant muscles are not doing the best for me and pilates as a regime is going to help me with that and that's what athletes realize mm-hmm. now say for example just to give you a simple example of uh, you know one sided sports like golf you know people mm-hmm. are using like you know either if if uh, you know somebody is a right hander or a left hander it's it's a one sided game so you mm-hmm. tend to get uh you know consistently over usage of certain muscle groups yeah. Yeah. over a period of time uh yeah. will always ensure that it's quite detrimental or people tend to kind of you know leaning on to one side will uh, uh get them to have more injuries on the other side or they tend to be unstable on the other side so pilates again yeah. balances all helps one balances all those mu- uh, structural and muscular imbalances that people have in their bodies and that is what sports right. people realize and it also helps over a period of time it helps one build resilience in the body which helps mm-hmm. in sporting performances and then um yeah. be- becoming physically aware helps one stay injury free also in the ball game so and that's Fantastic. what sports people realize over a period of time that pilates it's just not a regime which is going to help them you know help with their flexibility or coordination or strength or uh, endurance it's it's more about keeping them injury free so that they can you know uh, better their performances as they go along and as every sporting individual they realize that people do have uh, you know their sporting life is very short lived you know when they attain sure. their peak and uh, you know and they don't want to have down times they want to stay injury free because down times yeah. not only bogs people down physically it also bog- bogs them down mentally which can be quite detrimental sure. to their sporting careers and that is why people kind of you know uh, look to pilates to help them stay injury free and you know get to their maximum potential whenever excellent yeah mm-hmm. Um, yeah i don't have a question so, sorry uh-huh. i don't have a question but i have a comment um okay. so, so i actually turned 30 just a few days ago um okay and uh you know like you said uh, an athlete has a shelf life you know they are mm-hmm. at their peak for a period of time and obviously the hope and the idea for any athlete would be to to sort of prolong, it, yeah, yeah to prolong their peak to make sure that they're at the best yeah. form for as long as possible yeah. and i think it is yeah. a matter of education i think those who have yeah. the athletes that have exposure that have education uh, who understand the body yeah. and things like that and that usually happens once you mature as an athlete yeah. you start realizing yeah. that you can't just keep doing high intensity like training all the time and yeah. you know the body needs its um, active recovery days and you need um, yeah. you know you need uh, and the thing is that of course you need to have your recovery days in your training schedule uh, and things yeah. like pilates actually do have um, an active recovery element to it and you know it sort of helps with the flexibility of the bones and the muscles and um, helps you sort of have a longer career basically uh, it does. and i definitely you know, especially if especially now that i've turned 30 i know a lot of people say that you know you start going downhill after your yeah after yeah. your 30 <laughs> so the the two is the two thing i got pretty lucky because i had the you know foreign exposure when i was like in my early 20s so i understood very mm-hmm. early on that i need to find that balance between a high intensity um training and you know one that sort of helps with my body actually um uh as far as injury is concerned so that i can have a longer career right. so i think pilates has definitely had a part in that so um no. yeah i mean i definitely see with everything you're saying yeah because i mean it's it's recently just before uh you know the lockdown we have actually set up another studio a third space of ours at abtp which is the abhinav bindra targeting performance so yeah. uh, we we have a, a pilates studio there that we are actually managing because it's really important for sports people to yeah. continue a practice which helps them with their conditioning and also yeah. again as you said rightly said they need that recovery aspect as well in their training regime because high intensity yeah. sports can uh, i mean how long are you going to 
do it. Exactly. Think about it. Yeah. You know, you probably have like a good five years, seven years, eight years, because after that you need to stay fit. You need to stay injury free. And that's where low intensity sports come into being. And, and Pilates is one of them. Pilates and yoga, for example. Yoga is a yeah. fabulous practice too. And, you know, it's, it's, it's great. But again, as long as, uh, you know, the only, I would say, downside of yoga in India is because there are so many million methods of yoga. So the whole focus of you know, what yoga can actually do for you has moved away, um, right. you know, in the, in the recent times. So again, working with a very qualified instructor to, who understands your body, who, who knows what your focus is and helps you work towards your goals is what I think everybody be, should be looking forward to. Definitely. Great. So, yeah, moving on. Uh, now, I know that since you all are into high intensity, uh, you know, sporting activity like football, is there any conditioning programs that you girls do to stay injury free and, you know, to better your skills, etc.? So we definitely recommend it to girls like the girls that used to come and play football. Um, I would tell them, like, this is great that you're doing this once a week, but make sure you're doing things outside of this to sort of prepare your body for the sport. Because, uh, as you know, um, you know, playing a sport is on top of that fitness pyramid. You start off with general health and then you build yourself up because, you know, sport um, in itself requires, um, you know, uh, you to do complex movements. It's, it's demanding on the body. And uh, if you've not yeah. done any sort of activity for a long time, I wouldn't recommend that the first thing that you do is go out there and play a game of football. You'll most likely right. end up with an injury. Um, so yeah. I've always recommended, and we didn't have an offering of our own. I mean, today we do um, on our virtual sessions have a few options. But uh, when we first got started, um, I would always recommend that they do mm -hmm. something outside of these sessions to better prepare and condition their body for sport. So that's something I always okay. recommend it. Um, and I always started off all of these football sessions with a general warm up and just general mobility preparation, movement preparation work. Um, so I think okay. that has been able to, uh, you know, it has helped reduce the injuries. We still had injuries, no doubt, yeah. uh, but it definitely okay. helped reduce those injuries. It got the girls a little bit more aware of, you know, where they where they are at and, you know, what type of work they needed to do in order to be better on, on the field at the game. So, yeah, mm -hmm. um, for the most part, it was just us, you know, imparting the knowledge and the information to let them know that they need to go outside, outside of the football sessions and prepare their bodies for sport. Okay. Okay. Uh, Shweta, tell me, how many times do you, do you, you know, does the group meet? Yeah. Uh, do you have so, a fixed schedule that you work on? Yeah. Yeah, so we initially we started off with just the beginner session, which was uh, typically on a Saturday or a Sunday morning. Um, and then mm -hmm. once, uh, you know, we were we had worked with the girls or played with the girls for, I think, a year and a half. Uh, we decided to mm -hmm. add an intermediate session for those girls who had obviously played for a while and, you know, they were better at the sport now. Uh, so they needed okay. something a little bit more focused that Tanvi was able to design for them. Uh, so, mm -hmm. yeah, uh, before the lockdown, we would meet twice a week. Um, at least yeah. one batch was beginner batch and then the intermediate batch uh, would be typically on a Thursday evening. Um, so those right. are our two points of contact, uh, physical contact during the week. But um, okay. if you are part of our WhatsApp group, we are mm -hmm. very, very, very active. Uh, I mean, I think some okay. people have to drop out of the groups because we're that active. Uh, but yeah, okay. I, like, I, like you rightly pointed out, it was a community. It's a support community more than anything, you know, uh, football right. and sport brought us together initially and it keeps us together in, in a way, but we've also built mm -hmm. bonds and friendships and, you know, businesses have, you know, launched in, in a way we've supported businesses. All these women have supported us immensely, obviously. So yeah, okay. that's, uh, that's the way we've sort of evolved. Yeah. Okay. Fabulous. And now, uh, you know, coming to, I know, uh, you know, I definitely, uh, you know, want to, speak a little about uh, your fitness journey and, and uh, Tanvi's fitness journey. Now, those of our viewers who probably don't know uh, a lot about uh, Shweta or Tanvi. Now, Shweta is a performance coach and the founder and technical head of Sweat by Shweta, uh, which is a fin fitness consulting company that provides end-to-end -end fitness solution for corporates, commercial health clubs and individuals. And uh, uh, 
She's also worked as a personal trainer and a fitness coach uh, to over a decade and is one of the country's four Nike certified instructors. Correct, Shweta? That's so correct. we'd like to hear a little about your fitness journey. All right. Okay. I'll try and keep it as short, but I have a tendency to ramble. So <laughs> no, I mean, yeah, we, we have about yeah, 30 minutes. So, you know, all Insta okay. chats last for about okay. an hour. But we still do have 30 minutes, about at least about 20 minutes for sure. And if anybody has any questions, then we can take them online or then by all means, we can post them offline as well. Sure. So my sort of uh, passion for, for sport and activity and fitness was very strongly rooted uh, in my school days when I would play, uh, you know, every sport that there was in school, where, whether it was basketball mm -hmm. or badminton or hockey. Um, and I had actually represented the state of Karnataka in the under-16 hockey squad. So I was very passionate okay. about sport and growing up, I was an outdoorsy kid. And of course, you know how mm -hmm. um, it is in India. Once uh, it's, it's board exam time, you have to make a choice whether you go down the sport route or the academic route. And as mm -hmm. a woman in sport, it seemed like a very obvious choice that you choose academics because there was no future in sport. So I, I took, uh, you know, the natural choice, I suppose, at that point. Um, and then mm -hmm. I went away to Canada to pursue an undergraduate degree in economics. It was during mm -hmm. my time in Canada where, you know, sports sort of came to a standstill for the most part. I wasn't playing too much sport back then. I started hitting the university gym. I remember going into okay. the gym and not knowing what to do and just copying people and, you know, doing stupid bicep curls for hours. Um, but that's when, <laughs> that was my first introduction to the gym. And I found it, uh, mm -hmm. you know, incredibly boring, to be honest. But, you know, mm -hmm. it was just some outlet, some physical activity that I needed. Um, anyways, mm -hmm. uh, once I, uh, you know, completed the uh, degree and came back to India, I worked in Bangalore at UB City at um, Ernst & Young in UB City for a couple of years as a consultant. Uh, and mm -hmm. while I enjoyed the job, I was certainly not passionate about it. Uh, and I think mm -hmm. at the end of my two year stint, I was pretty sure that I wanted to get back or get into rather the uh, sport or fitness industry. Uh, and mm -hmm. I had the good fortune of meeting an entrepreneur who was setting up Bangalore's first um, health club, uh, premium health club. Um, it okay. was called Zella and was res uh, located on Residency Road. And I quit my uh -huh. EY job to be part okay. of his startup team to help set up the gym. So it was during that time mm -hmm. I sort of understood what it took from a management perspective, you know, operations perspective to set up a gym. Um, and okay. I think from the time I joined uh, his team, it took about two years for us to physically open uh, for members. And mm -hmm. at that point, again, I had this itch to, you know, do a physical job, if you will. Um, and mm -hmm. uh, he actually suggested to me that I become a personal trainer. Uh, mm -hmm. And to be very honest, at that point, I thought it was the most uh, ridiculous suggestion because, you know, over a decade ago, bodybuilding was still very big in India. And mm -hmm. all the trainers back then, at least at the gym that I worked at, were bodybuilders. There were 35 male instructors. There were no female instructors. So okay. I was you know, not very keen on becoming a personal trainer, but I said, you know, I'd give it a shot. So I actually spent three yeah. months on the gym floor, just replacing weights, um, watching and shadowing other trainers. Uh -huh. And then, uh, what happened? Uh -huh. Sorry. Okay. <laughs> watching and shadowing other trainers. Um, and then after those three months, I was, you know, pretty convinced that, you know, I'm enjoying the gym floor and I'd like to sort of uh, maybe make a career out of it. So that's when okay. I went to the UK to get certified. And that was, like I said, over a decade ago, I think. Um, got certified okay. as an instructor and came back and started my career as, pers as a personal trainer. Uh, mm -hmm. You know, after a few years, I, I mean, and I went back to the UK every year. And I've been going back every year to get uh, a new uh, certificate or a new understanding of fitness in different areas of fitness. Um, and yeah. then uh, a few years uh, ago, I also started Sweat by Shweta, which was, you know, this fitness consulting company. And I've you know, mm -hmm. have a few corporate clients and I've set up a few commercial health club spaces. Um, and then, of course, okay. Nike happened, I think, about six years ago for me, uh, where mm -hmm. I, you know, got signed on to be a, a Nike training club coach, which was, I think, you know, okay. for me, a, a huge achievement as, as a fitness instructor. So, Absolutely. and then, of course, this has been sweat more recently with Tanvi Hans, which is perhaps, right. you know, the biggest joy in my life right now. <laughs> yeah. 
No, thank you. Thank you so much. I'm sure that's been quite an incredible journey for you, Shweta, and you're, you're probably enjoying every bit of it today. Yeah. 100%. I mean, I think eventually, you know, eventually I think everybody reaches a point in time where we want to do something that we are passionate about because corporate jobs are great. You know, yes, it gives you the big money, but yeah. you reach a point where passion takes over that. Definitely. Yeah, yeah. Definitely. which is, which is yeah. great. Now coming right. to Sh uh, Tanvi, uh, yes, Tanvi is uh, a very well-known footballer in the country. Uh, she is one among uh, a handful of Indian origin players who has played for English clubs like Tottenham and Fulham ladies, correct Tanvi? And plus yes. you captain the Karnataka team and also the Parikrama FC team in Bangalore. So, uh, Tell us about your journey as a footballer and what prompted you to be a footballer, which is not a very popular sport uh, among women in India per se, correct? Yeah, um, and I think yeah. I think you still can't call it a full-time career because there's not a lot of yeah. money. Um, like I don't think there's a single, uh, even like a single national team player who can say that she's living off just playing. You know, um, it's mm. not a full time career. It definitely is a very offbeat choice um, as a career. Yeah. But um, I think I I have to admit to the fact that I damn is that did we get cut off? I think so, we did. I think just for a bit, I think we're back on now. <laughs> okay. All good now? Yeah, all good. Is it all, all good? good? Okay. So, yeah, I think uh, I've pretty much always been a sporty girl since I was small. Uh, and I've, you know, mm -hmm. played all the sports. Okay. So I'm basically from Delhi. Um, and, uh, I, okay. you know, I, I picked up sports very easily. I just had a flair for sports very naturally. Um, and I think uh, maybe mm -hmm. at the age of eight or nine, when I was introduced to football, I just had a very natural mm -hmm. connection and an immediate love for the sport, um, which I can't particularly okay. explain, but I just, I just loved it. Mm -hmm. um, and at that yeah. time, actually, there were not a lot of girls in Delhi that played football. Um, so mm -hmm. my school team just happened to be the first school, Vasant Valley was my school uh, in Delhi. And we, okay. we made mm -hmm. the first... Um, the first school team was actually our school team in Delhi. Um, so just because okay. of that, the, the Delhi state team basically comprised of my school team. So that, uh, okay. that was at the, age of, at the age of about 13, um, I represented Delhi uh, and that sort of at the national level. And that sort of is where my journey started. And when I, when we represented, when I represented Delhi at the national level, I realized obviously there's so much competition out there, how much I needed to improve. Um, and I really wanted to sort of get better and play wherever I could. So, in mm -hmm. fact, I actually started playing with the boys before we started a girls team in our school. Right. I played with the mm -hmm. boys. And even till date, I, I still play with the boys. You know, I prefer it. It's mm -hmm. competitive. It's challenging. It's physical. Yeah. Um, yeah. So yeah, I mean, I think uh, um, I don't really have a very twisty like uh, journey because for me, it's been very clear. I enjoy it. I knew very... Mm -hmm at a very young age that I wanted to do something in football. I didn't know what it was going to be, but I just wanted to play wherever I could. Um, so obviously okay. I played in school, I played for the state team, um, and yeah. I went to JMC, which is also in Delhi, uh, my college, um, played for the college team, played for Delhi University. Then for my master's, since we're talking specifically about Pilates in this, uh, in this session, and we're talking about the, uh, the journey, of our, like our fitness journey, um, obviously, mm -hmm. for any athlete, your fitness goes hand in hand, especially for like a sport like football, you know. So for me, right. I think when I went for my master's um, in 2011, um, mm -hmm. that is sort of where, uh, you know, up until that point, my football mm -hmm. was completely dependent on my skill uh, and the fact okay. that I was a natural athlete. You know, I was very mm -hmm. naturally fast. I was very naturally skillful. All those things were very natural for me. I had never concentrated up until that point on actually developing my body um, to go with the sport. 
I had just sort of okay. depended on what I had naturally. Um and right. at that point because obviously in England uh, it's a lot more structured it's a lot more competitive the coaching system yeah. is a lot more professional all those things so um for me to even break into the first team of my college team you know took me mm-hmm. a little while and that was like an eye opener for me and I realized that um I have to work on my body you know mm-hmm. so at okay. that point is when i started hitting the gym uh, i realized the importance of um, you know rest days i realized the importance of building um, a stronger core building a stronger body um, you know and uh, doing a lot of resistance training that sort of when my uh, i would say the fitness journey uh, actually began um, okay. and yeah i think uh, after i came back from my masters I had decided to go back to London and give trials for a few clubs and of course the club level is even higher it's like it's like mm-hmm. a, it's you know it's probably one of the highest levels you can play at um right so obviously you can imagine at that level you need to be you know absolutely at your best and best. when I had decided to go and give trials for those clubs I had to really really work on my body um I had to really mm-hmm. work on my physicality and all those things um And yeah I think that's sort of how it all happened and that's how I started becoming a uh, more aware of what my body needs of the demands of the body of um, of the fact that there needs to be a balance between uh, you know uh, your recovery your flexibility your um, yeah. strength speed you can't just you know uh, do all high intensity training and do only skill based training even uh, there needs to be a yeah. balance and I think thanks to yeah. that that would like i said i just turned 30 <laughs> 30 a few days ago uh but mm-hmm. i'm still like one of the fittest players in my team and i think that my best is still ahead of me that's what i feel you know yeah. and i think that thanks mm-hmm. to the journey that i've had the education and the exposure that i've had um yeah. that i've been able yeah. to create a routine for myself that is fairly balanced um yeah. so yeah no which is yeah, I mean, which is great yeah <laughs> No thank you so much. I mean I think that's that's like quite enduring and I understand that it's a lot of hard work at the end of the day and it's 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 great for women out there to understand that offbeat careers uh, are out there. People should definitely look at such careers. It's uh, yeah. you know again you you tend to be more passionate, you uh, you know what exactly you're getting into. Okay, initially probably you don't know what you're getting into, but once you get into it and you know you tend to grow passionate about it and there's no no looking back because again it doesn't stop it's i mean there is no probably as fitness instructors or whatever yes again uh, you look at working for 15 years 20 years but again eventually by then you've fulfilled whatever you've had to yeah. fulfill you know yeah. uh, from uh, what what you want to be able to give the community as well because i myself used to be in the corporate world before pilates got to me and i you know after i had my three children is when i actually got into studying and eventually teaching pilates and and wow. today i think i'm i'm like the happiest person to be doing it yeah. i've been teaching pilates practicing pilates for the last 15 years and i love every bit of it yeah and it's definitely uh, a and and to have your uh, passion be a career right i mean um, yeah I, yeah I mean, for a lot of people it feels and like a risk but uh, the payoff yeah. is in just waking up and doing a job that you love yeah. more than anything yeah yeah and and yeah, and, and you know it's not it's not monotonous and you're not looking you know uh, to it's it's not a 9 to 5 job like a typical corporate job yeah. uh, yes you you do tend to work i mean i tend to work some crazy hours sometimes like now i'm back home in dubai so i'm i'm yeah. teaching all over uh, yeah. clients online in the us yeah. and singapore all over different time zones but it's every day is not the same it's it's different it's not, yeah. and 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 there's so much of variety to what you're doing and and there is yeah. no scope for boredom and uh, you know it just keeps you going and and it's it's not a you know a, a, a chore that you think that you're doing on a daily basis it's it's something that you want to be able to look forward to and you enjoy doing it Yeah. Definitely. 100%. I also think though to some extent it's it's a privilege that for example like we both Tanvi and me for sure uh, uh for me I I'll definitely speak for myself like if I had to be the bread earner of my family this would have been a lot harder decision to make yeah. uh than yeah. you know sitting in the comfortable position that I was uh, or that yeah. I am rather. Um uh, but I do yeah. feel like now things have changed so much the fitness industry especially yeah. if you're looking to make a career in fitness and various other spaces as well it's opened up so much yeah. that you know the the risk is a lot less uh, than it was before 
but nonetheless yeah. i think you know uh, for a lot of people it's it's still a hard uh, decision to make uh, especially yeah. if they don't have the privileged lives that some of us do so i have yeah. to say that i mean i feel incredibly best that i even had the um, opportunity to make the the decision yeah. to follow my yeah. passion yeah, yeah. and think, having uh, said that shweta now i think in india it is definitely a lucrative career you just need to uh, you know focus on what you want to do and specialize in yeah. that because again learning never stops in whatever field you are like you I, I, as you said you know as a fitness instructor you need to keep upping your skills to be that very best for your clients it's just not about one certification program that you yeah. do and you think you can yeah. go on for years and years right you need yeah. to keep yeah. up in your knowledge your skills to be able to bring the yeah. best out of you so that you you know you have that set of clientele yeah. to work with on a regular basis yeah and i think the other big point with women in 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 careers especially in fitness and sport is that i mean a while ago we didn't have too many mentors to look up to and to sort of follow their journey today girls right in india so. have tanvi hans people who want to you know practice pilates have yeah. you uh, and that's great you know and uh, it it definitely helps to have those mentors in the space uh, in the industry that you want to sort of um, yeah. blossom in so yeah th- that's also something that i have noticed because when i first became an instructor there was nobody else that i could sort of relate to everybody else was a male instructor uh and mm-hmm. i have to say the turning point for me was when i joined team nike and then i had you know uh, a bigger community with a lot more female instructors across the globe and that changed things right. for me it really sort of built my confidence to be more yeah um, and i can yeah. see how many girls get inspired by tanvi uh, on the daily you know um and you know want they have, we want to be like tanvi you know i yeah. don't know if she had that in in india growing up and possibly <laughs> not really you know so it's good that yeah. you know, the opportunities the you know the industry is uh, a lot more open now and yeah the the fact that we have mentors that we can sort of look up to and uh, yeah. yeah yeah i think um, but i think india is sorry sorry go on tanvi i know we cut you short the previous time sorry <laughs> no, i was just going to say that i think right now uh, you know the current space is such that you actually we actually have room for creativity in our industry in any industry as yeah. well and i think like shweta yeah. said i think um, you know uh, i think this is true for a lot of our gen- our generation at least um, mm-hmm. you know we don't have the pressure of you know um, being the bread earner or whatever so we actually can try and make a career out of our passion and then it just comes yeah. down to the fact that you need to stay your course if you stay your course yeah. opportunities do come and they come in the strangest yeah. of ways um and yeah. there is room for creativity like i said like you know for, for yeah. to be very honest when i moved to bangalore i didn't have a sisters in sweat in mind or anything it just happened you know yeah. uh it just happened because i mean because i'm passionate about football she's passionate mm-hmm. about fitness we met each other and this opportunity just happened and it grew on its own and you know yeah. um that's one example and i think this is true yeah. for any na- indian national at least female national team player um they mm-hmm. are all they all have a job on the side that supports their passion you know uh, as long as yeah. they stay close to their passion and they stay close to their sport whatever it takes yeah. to do that around it um yeah. is okay as long as you're keeping that passion alive as long as you're staying your course you're sort of sticking to what you enjoy as well um and i think yeah. we have that luxury now um to yeah. sort of be creative with uh, our time and be creative with uh, how we use our passion um Yeah. I think because that is what the this generation is about you know it's about Yeah and I think I mean it's 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 fabulous that this this generation actually uh, understands that fit, fitness is just not you know very uh, short sighted or it's just not short term goals like India yeah. was you know uh say a decade ago i mean you know people went to, went to the gym either you know they had a wedding coming up uh they yeah, had to yeah. fit into a certain size dress but now yeah. it's more of a lifestyle program it's more about well-being and people do understand that it's so important and you know the last few few months have been so hard on everybody yeah. and i think mm-hmm. fitness has played a major role wherever one is you know people are doing online lessons trying to mm-hmm. you know talk to nutritionists or you know doing doing all forms of regime to stay fit to stay healthy again to stay mentally sound as well yeah, yeah. agreed yeah
but 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 good uh yeah i think uh, i was just seeing if we had any questions probably not at this stage <laughs> but we should uh, yeah i think yeah. i think comments mm-hmm. ambika ganpati says your training camp sounds like super fun how you yeah. guys handling training during covid times so would you like to take that question so could you just uh, repeat the question we missed it uh, okay ambika uh, is asking your training camps sound yeah. like super fun how do you guys or how you guys handling training during covid mm-hmm. times i would say our virtual sessions i mean nothing like being mm-hmm. out on the field and being able to kick kick the ball around but uh, you know yeah. we managed to sort of pivot during this time to the virtual space and offer a variety of online classes so that's how we're sort of keeping fit um you know tanvi was uh, i mean i guess she'll come bring it bring it back soon but she was also doing a virtual football session uh which was helping us stay in touch with the uh, with the sport um i i continue to do a, a midweek burn high intensity uh training session which you know some of the girls jump into so yeah we're doing various things to just sort of keep the yeah. community engaged and active and i feel like people have a lot more times on their like time on their hands right now so yeah. i know a yeah. lot of people who are actually getting fitter than they used to be during this time right um yeah. so yeah so i think um, everyone is yeah. using their time well and and getting into shape and there's so many uh, options out there to you know uh, do various things to stay in shape now so yeah yeah i can yeah. see another question here from dazzle yeah. with push uh, it says uh, how to get involved in sport with no sport background how to join your community so two two questions here how to join our community just go to our website and register online and that's how you join us but um <laughs> our whole premise uh, or the reason we started was we wanted to bring sport into the lives of every woman right whether you played before you had ba- a background in sport or you know you had played for a you know state team we wanted to be for everybody so um the way we've designed our sessions is to make it accessible for everybody so even if you've never played a sport before you know the ne- when we are ready to uh, sort of open up our sessions again do come down because you will find that we have uh, we've designed our program such that it really doesn't matter whether you have the background or not uh, of course if you haven't played the sport better we'll advise you to take it a bit slow um and uh, you know from an exercise perspective i'll always give you regressed versions of each exercise but yeah it's it's this this community is not for pro athletes i mean it can be if you if you're a pro athlete you're more than welcome but it's for everybody it is for everybody so yeah so i hope you know i i'm sure you're going to have a lot more people wanting to join your community and and uh, yeah i think there's one more question maybe we do have five more minutes or four more minutes ideally uh, how many hours does a sports player need to train a day so who would like to take that on <laughs> <laughs> um i think honestly it depends on what part of the season you're in if you're in pre season or you know mid season or whatever um ideally if you can get between 3 to 4 hours a day technically you should split it between the morning and evening so if you do let's say your um you do your physical training in the morning where you work on yeah where you work on strength you work on your endurance uh, things like that in the morning and the evening would be more skill based so you'd work on your skills your technical the technical aspect of the sport a little bit more um or with your team training so that's that's ideally what uh, it looks like um and every day if you do 2 hours 2 hours or so, i mean you can also go up to 3 and 3 but i wouldn't advise more than that <laughs> yeah okay great thank you tanvi i think we just have time for one more question copy 24 Hi just wanted to check whether there are online classes for pilates yes there are online classes we we do yes. privates we do intro level groups and we do a uh, beginner and intermediate groups as well so if you could call the studio you get all the information that we want but but great it's been such a pleasure to chat with both of you ladies and and thank you so thank much you. for sharing so much about and so much of information about sisters and sweat as well as your personal journeys it's been really really great and i'd actually like to welcome you both you know come and try pilates come and try the form of pilates you know what, that there's, there's a studio just down the road from my house your studio and 
everybody on my street has virtually joined and i have always said it i'm going to go today i'm going to go today but i'm definitely going to make it down there very soon yeah in, in, in fact when i was talking yeah. to jampi the other weekend in fact yeah. i was suggesting to her hey you know what now that we're doing online group classes you know i'll be yeah. happy to teach you girls one day maybe we can fix right. up something just just That's do great. a taste a lesson for you to understand what classical pilates is all about and you know we can we, we can do like a 60 minute session at yeah, your convenience and you know we 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 could kind of put that on sometime okay sounds, sounds good. good yeah thank okay, you so much okay great thank you so much